Today I'm going to be sharing with you my five top tips for getting started using GarageBand on your iPad or iPhone. I'm going to be demonstrating on my iPad just so I have a bigger screen here, but this also applies on your iPhone. The interface is the same. And so to get started with, my first tip is to talk about the sound browser. And that is the screen that comes up when you first open GarageBand. And you can swipe to your right or to your left, and it'll show you some different instruments that you can plug in here. And then they also have some elements to attach external devices. You can also browse their sound library, and you can record your own voice or your own instruments. So they have a lot of different options here. And up at the top, you see where it says tracks and live loops. Live loops is sort of a totally different way of working with GarageBand. So for today, we're going to be focusing on the tracks view. So this gives you an idea of where everything is at. And then down below each instrument, you see you have a couple of different options to do smart guitar, which does a lot of the work for you, notes, scales, more sounds. So depending on your skill level or your training in any of these instruments, you can really have GarageBand do more or less work for you, depending on what you want. And the other thing to keep in mind is that this is really step one. You've got to pick an instrument, get started, and once you record your first track, that'll allow you to advance into the tracks view. So we'll talk about that later on. Tip number two is going to be talking about touch instruments. So once you pick an instrument that you want to start with, let's say I just want to start with guitar, we're going to start with smart guitar. So I'm going to go into that option. And that brings you to your recording view. So this is how you'll actually create the tracks that are going to go into your track, and then you can edit them from there. Now, the bulk of the screen here is kind of your play area where you can create the music, and then there's some con other controls across the top. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is you can select the type of instrument that you want. You see where it says acoustic? You can click on that. You can go classic clean, or you can go to hard rock retro wah right so you have all these different instruments that you can pick and choose from but then the layout is very similar so they have a couple of effects here you can turn those on or off as you want and then down here in the play area you can either tap the individual notes or you can strum with your finger just like you would a guitar to create the, the sound or a chord from there. The other option up here is, you see where it says autoplay, you can switch to just different autoplay scenarios and it'll give you a strum pattern. So let's say I go to autoplay one and we'll click on the C chord. Now, hands free, it is creating that strum pattern. So by doing that, you really have endless amounts of options to create that strum pattern. Again, this is a way for you to be able to create music even if you don't have the base knowledge of playing those actual instruments. Now over here also you have chords, and in the chords view, now you can actually create these chords with your fingers. You can create those or give some slide effects. And again, you need a little bit more experience to know what those chords are, and you can do it that way. So we're going to go back to the notes view. Again, up in the top left-hand corner, you can see there's like three squares all next to each other. That takes you back to the sound browser, so you can pick different instruments in that way. And then you can go into those instruments again, like the strings. And they all play a little bit different. kind of just play around with those and get all the different sounds that you want to get, right? So that's how you operate the touch instruments. Now, the other option here too is let's go to the piano and you can go into just the keys. And you can play them that way as well. So you can really, you can't damage it. You can get in there and just kind of play around with the different instruments and have fun with them that way. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to the guitar here. 
And step number three is recording your instrument. And like I said, you just have to start with one instrument, start the track, and then I'll take you into the track view and show you how to do additional things from there. So let's say I wanna do acoustic, and let's say I just wanna record my own kind of strum pattern here, and we're just gonna go up to the top, we're gonna to hit record, and you can see it has a metronome that starts counting, and then, And then you can stop that and then you can play it back. All right. Now, once you've recorded that, now you see the option over on the left hand side where it has the three rows there. That'll take you into the track view. Now you can see this is our track that we just recorded. You have a playhead here that you can slide back and forth and then we can listen to it again. You can also slide these tracks and put them in different places. You can grab the edge and cut that maybe beginning part out so we we where I wasn't playing yet and cut the ending. You can do all these things right in here. And once you have what you want there, then you can go back into the sound browser and let's say we want to get some drums in here and we'll go smart drums. Kind of cool, so you can just record that. And you see it plays the guitar as part of that. You hit stop, and now when we go back to that, we now have our uh, drum machine in there. And you just go through there and just keep layering in all the different tracks that you want, however you want those to sound. And then if you click on the track, you can rename it, you can move it, you can loop it if it's just something that you wanna keep playing and all those sorts of things in there. And now step number four is recording your own audio. So the iPad and iPhone both have really great built-in microphones, so you can be able to just use those. You can also plug in an external microphone or headset microphone if you wish to do it that way. And you can sing along with your track. So let's talk a little bit about that. So we're gonna go back to the sound browser and we're going to go slide over here to record audio. And let's say we go voice. And you can see as I'm talking, you can see the in mic going through there. And you can change your, your pitch. You can change your all the sorts of different dials here, however you want that to be. Now, for the sake of everyone watching this, I'm not going to sing, but I will record my voice here a little bit. And then once you have that recorded, what you can do is go over to the fun section. And now you got these different kind of filters that you could put on as you want. So let's say I want the dreamy one. The audio track. Your voice into the audio track. All right. So you got all these different kinds of things that you can do in there. And then again, we go into the tracks view. Now you can see you can kind of click on your track. You can move it where you want it to go, however you want. And you can do the same thing if, if you have an adapter to plug in your own instrument, you can play those or keyboard or whatever the case is there. So you can just continue to layer in all the instrumentation that you wanna layer in there. But now let's talk about step number five, which is using loops. So GarageBand has a huge library of royalty-free loops that you can also add into there that you don't have to create yourself. So up in the top right-hand corner, you can see this little loop insignia here, and we're gonna click on that and it'll open up all of these different loops that are in here. But what you can do to make it a little bit easier is you can search if you know exactly what you're looking for, or I like to go to these filters. You can go to instruments. Let's say we wanna get some piano in there and pick the genre here. And we can go, let's say we want house piano. That sounds good, let's take that. So you just grab and hold it, slide it into your track view, and there you go. Now you can slide your Playhead over. There you go. And now once you have everything kind of laid in there, we're gonna go up to the top here. You see the little, little slider bar next to FX to get your track settings. Now when you click on these different instruments, you can change the volume. You can mute that one. You can solo that one. You can adjust any of the reverb, echo, and you can go through each of these 
and dial it in exactly how you want. And then once you're done, all you have to do is go up to the top, the far left hand corner up at the top and you click on the file there and it'll save it into your iCloud. And then you can see I've got a couple of songs there and you can rename them or you can go in and do more work on another song, whatever you want. And those are my five tips to get you started using GarageBand. Go in there, have some fun, enjoy playing some music, and I will see you in the next one.